Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins to God, who is faithful and just, he will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor.
Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, gives the water of eternal life, may we always thirst for you, the spring of life and source of goodness. Through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our brokenness, may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Oh, ever want to close, Come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. So why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which is not satisfied? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. I will make of you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, show love for David. See, I made him a witness to a peoples, a leader and a commander for peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he is glorified you. Seek the Lord where he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way, and let the unrighteous go far. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will be abundantly pleasant. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than my thoughts than your thoughts. Thanks be to God. O God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in a barren and dry land where there is no water. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. Then I remember you all my days, and meditate on you in the night of life. For you have been my helper and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul thinks to you, your right hand holds me
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all the other Galileans? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those eighteen who were killed when the tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year, until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Today, on this third Sunday of Lent, in our uh, Old Testament reading and in the psalm, there is a theme of feeding. Come, buy wine and milk without money, without price. Come, come and taste and eat, and my soul is satisfied as with marrow and fatness. There's a sense of abundance and a sense of nourishment and of celebration as well. These are not just uh, foods to get by, but rich foods, we're told. It's a metaphor, of course, for the life in God. Come and be fed abundantly from my life, God says to us. Come and, and draw your drink from the well of my deep spirit. Come and be nourished by me. That theme runs throughout Scripture. Indeed, to the point that when Jesus wishes to leave for us a means of recalling him to our presence, to remember him, to make him a member of the company again. He gives us a meal. Now, it comes to us in the modern church as rather a paltry meal in physical terms. And that's not going to nourish anyone's body in physical terms. But spiritually, it is a meal of immense depth and vastness, like we had sat down uh, to a table well laden. The feast, a deep and rich image, nourishment from God. There's another deep and rich image that uh, shows up in today's readings, and that is of the unfruitful tree or the unfruitful plant. It is found throughout Scripture, the vineyard which gets planted, which doesn't produce. Uh, Israel seen as, a, as an unproductive tree or vine. And the rationale behind it is constant. The rationale behind why the vineyard, why the tree does not produce fruit is constant. and has not sunk its roots into the divine life. It has sought out other nourishment. Whether that was following other gods, whether that was laxity in actually acknowledging and worshiping God, the trees do not produce because they have not drawn nourishment from their source. Planted by God, as we are told in the parable, the tree, the fig tree, was planted in the vineyard. Planted by God, 
Its roots didn't seek out God's life. Its roots rather sought out its own nourishment. Sought out all of the things which are not unique to the time of the Bible, which we didn't invent, but we certainly still wrap ourselves around. Money and power and honor, sensual pleasures, all of the things of the world that we follow, thinking this, this will complete me. This will nourish me. This will give me life. This will make me whole. And of course, we have a hunger in us, a thirst in us for something more profound. We have a thirst that can only be quenched by God. We have a hunger that can only be sated by God. And when you have a hunger and a thirst for something infinite, no amount of finite things will ever fill it. No amount of finite pleasures will ever fill that hunger or slake that thirst. It's impossible. You cannot fill an infinite with a finite. And so what happens, right? We see it. The roots having extended themselves out towards some alternate source of food and drink, when that is dried up, what do they do? Well, they go further to seek out more. You've seen trees that have grown that way, right? The, the shade has fallen a certain way and the tree grows over here and it keeps growing over this way and eventually becomes imbalanced and the, the limb falls off or the whole thing crashes down, doesn't it? Seeking out these unfulfilling foods, these you know, unrewarding drinks, we extend ourselves and extend ourselves in directions that are never going to fulfill. And we don't bear fruit. Now the answer of the gardener, in the, or rather the owner of the vineyard in the parable is of course just chop it down. It's not producing anything. Chop it down. And, and there's a deep spiritual truth here. We are supposed to bear fruit. We have a mission from God, something we are intended to do in this world. Something that God has given to you, just you, to do. No other person can do it because it is your mission and designed specifically for you and you for it. The owner of the vineyard in the parable says, well, it's not doing what it's supposed to do. It's not bearing fruit. Chop it down. The gardener says, might we give it a chance? Give it another year. Let me tend it specially. Let me give it my special love and care. Let me dig around it and put manure on it. Which, you know, in human terms sounds rather off-putting, but remember, it is a plant. They love that stuff. Let me tend to this tree and care for it. Give it my special love and attention and then see if it won't grow. See if it won't produce. In other words, as the tree has sought out some other nourishment, as the tree is not doing what the tree is supposed to do, the response is not immediately to cut it down. The response is to feed it more, to love it more, in the hopes that the fruit will come. Now, it is still up to the tree to bear the fruit, right? The tree still has to accept that nourishment and grow. But let me do everything I can, the gardener says. So Jesus says of us. So Jesus says of us. Everything I can, let me do. And give them a chance to bear fruit. And when we bear fruit, and you can see it when it happens, right? You see places where love has grown. Where compassion has grown, where generosity, where humbleness of spirit have grown, and the harvest is amazing. Places where, where people are fed, literally fed, and spiritually and emotionally fed. You know, that neighbor who just has this way of when a disaster strikes, showing up with precisely what you need, whether it is words or casserole or anything in between. You know, those special places, and I have a feeling this is one of them. In fact, I know it is. 
where people walk in and instantly know, here is home. You know, those people who seem to be able to strike out into the world and accomplish astonishing things. They're like the Martha Stewarts of community living. You remember Martha Stewart, bless her soul, whatever happened to her? She could tile a bathtub with used credit cards and it looked beautiful. <laughs> Those people who can take what seems like disaster and turn it into something beautiful. Trees that are bearing fruit. Over the weekend, for whatever reason, months ago, I subscribed to an arborist's channel, or a dendrologist's channel, actually, as I, as I found out, um, study of trees. And uh, I, for whatever, yesterday, I was watching one of his videos about pruning trees, and his advice was don't, at least fruit trees. You're pruning a tree, you're generally trying to make it grow bigger and upright, right, up here make it big, tall, and impressive. But that's not what you want in a fruit tree. You want small and humble and bent down because then you can get the fruit. And then it isn't putting its energy into growing big and tall and impressive. It's putting its energy into providing fruit. What a beautiful metaphor for this fig tree. How many of us vaunt ourselves and try to grow as big and impressive as we can and put all our energy into this when God is saying, no, Stay small, stay humble, bear good fruit. I never thought I'd find theology in dendrology, but there it is. And did you even know dendrology was a word? I didn't. At any rate, God would feed us and give us drink from the deep well of his own life and would rescue us, save us, Give us whatever special love and care is necessary that we might bear fruit. Fruit that will feed and become a beautiful and rich harvest. That's what we do during Lent. We pile manure around ourselves. We prepare ourselves. We let it be piled on us. We prepare ourselves that we might bear fruit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please stand. And let us profess our faith as we say. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being, the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in the first of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who pro 
proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church throughout the world, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. We remember particularly Bishop Susan, the clergy and people of this diocese, and of our neighbors at St. George's as they begin a search for a new rector. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, For those preparing for baptism or confirmation, and for their teachers and sponsors, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, For peace in the world, that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples, holding particularly people of Ukraine and Russia. We pray to you, Lord. Lord have For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer. For Marv, Marlene, Mary, Marjorie, Leah, Maeve, all others whom we hold in our hearts. For refugees, prisoners, and all in danger, refugees from Ukraine, from Afghanistan, from Syria, and all places of conflict, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, Lord, Lord have for all whom we have injured or offended, we pray to you, Lord. Lord have for grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God, we pray to you, Lord. Lord have mercy. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with 